Okay, I'm going to show you how to set up a train. Now, this is the default setup for O3DE, but I added the terrain gem before I started this up and built the project. So you'd have to do that before you start this tutorial. So to get around in the scene, it's use the WASD keys. So if I right click the screen and I hold down and I use the WASD keys, I can move around. So I'm going to kind of move to the side here. And before we get started with the train setup, I got to kind of set up the level for setting up the train. So I'm going to click up here on the level on the upper left and it'll allow me to add some components that are for the level. Now I need the train world and the train world render. I'm not really going to mess with these settings here, even though there's a lot of good settings in there to adjust, but I'm not going to mess with any of those for this tutorial. And now that I got the that in there, I'm going to right click the screen here and I'm going to create entity. And I have apparently moved. OK, it's over there. I got to I'm going to move this terrain object that I'm going to be making over here. Hopefully it appears where you right click on the screen like it should have. But uh, so I'm going to go to add component. Type in terrain, and what I'm going to do is add the train layer spawner. Now, this component requires another component to work properly, and it wants a box shape. So I'm going to click and add that, and now it's got the box shape. For the train, this one by one meter thing isn't going to work, so I'm going to have to click in there and click 10. By 10, enter, and then I'm going to drag it up a little bit here. And you notice it's got just a flat plane for the terrain. Uh, that's this, this layer spawner created that terrain. Now, we're going to want, you know, detail on that. So the way O3DE wants it done is through another component. So, or another entity. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. It's not, it's not set in stone, but what I'm going to do is right click on this entity here, create new entity. And I created a child object on that entity that I right clicked. So if I go over to here and add another component, I'm going to type in gradient and I want Erlen noise gradient. So it's going to want some more components like the uh, previous component did. So I'm going to add a gradient transform modifier and it's also wants a box shape. So I'm going to set the box shape here. Now, uh, I'm going to quickly name this here. Uh, gradient and uh, I'm going to take this guy here. I'm going to zoom out to give it more details. You'll see that in a second here. And I'm also going to click this little eye thing here and remove the helper just so you can see what's going on a little nicer. There's like zero detail on the plane right now, but you'll see me adjust it here in a second. Okay, this should all be set up for the gradient. Now I'm going to go click back to entity one, which I'm going to rename uh, terrain. And I need to link the terrain to the gradient here. So the way that is done is through the terrain height gradient list. So I'm going to click that guy. Then I hit the plus. And there's a little target icon here. Now you click that. It's a picker. And you want to pick that gradient. And once you pick that gradient, it updates immediately. It's uh, actually rather performant. So if I click back into the gradient here, you can see that the if I mess with the the frequency, it updates the, rather rapidly. 
So from there, so say you wanted a little bit more color to that, you go back to the terrain and you want to add uh, the macro material. And I'm just going to click into here. See this, this color texture. I'm going to select the little folder. And I'm typing in dev for the dev textures that come with Rita. And then I'm going to click that guy because he's colorful. And it updates. Now, one last thing I was going to cover in this basic setup is if I select this guy here and hit Control D, I can duplicate it. And if I drag this guy out by grabbing the arrow, pop him off the edge there. Okay, now if I move over with the WSAD keys, now these are designed to snap together. See, it snaps it together. So you could build your world out in chunks and they'll the seams will snap together with each terrain component. And I think I'm going to call that the end of this tutorial. I'll be back with more.